Welcome to Ruins and Haunting Heritage. My name is Dr. April Besaw. I'm an Associate Professor of Anthropology at Vassar College, and this is my archaeology seminar for the fall 2020 semester. We're going to talk about the film Older Than America by Georgina Lightning and a little bit about another film called uh, Rhymes for Young Ghouls, which is a little more of a Canada version and a little more post, uh, it's almost a, almost a sequel uh, to Older Than America, but in a slightly different way, less ghostly, but uh, still uh, ghoulish, right? Rhyme for Young Ghouls. So Older Than America is a 2008 film that is about the ghosts of an Indian boarding school and specifically one located in Minnesota on the Fond du Lac Reservation. And the film takes place on the reservation and at the tribal college and so forth in in Minnesota. Um, It was created by uh, Tribal Alliance Films, which is Georgina Lightning's uh, organization, uh, in association with the San Manuel Band of Mission Indians, which is a California group of indigenous uh, people. So this is very much uh, an indigenous made film backed by indigenous people, indigenous groups, and oddly enough stars a young Bradley Cooper as the non-native person um, of focus in the movie. It relates to what we've been talking about in the course, uh, not only because it's a horror movie and has ghosts in it, but that it's also a way of telling stories about the past that make people understand what happened in a different way. This story This movie opens with the Sundance, which was a Plains tradition, still is a Plains transition tradition, but was outlawed for a long time by both the United States and Canada. And it was only through the uh, American Indian Religious Freedom Act that the right to do the Sundance comes back. This is a ceremony that has a central pole and it features dancing And oftentimes um, people will have pierced their skin with hooks that are connected to this pole and they will dance and the pain and the hunger and it it is part of having visions. So having visions and uh, seeing ghosts is equated in many ways. So they also start with uh, the medicine wheel, a circle with a plus in the center with four colors, the colors being white, black, red, and yellow is something that is common in many different indigenous cultures in North America. And the exact interpretation of it varies with the culture um, that you're speaking of. But it is part of the uh, emblem or logo of the Fond du Lac Reservation is this medicine wheel. And the medicine wheel is all about relationships and how uh, to be in balance. So it's a circle with a plus sign in the center, so everything is balanced. Um, To be in balance, you have to consider various aspects. You can't just be on one side or the other. You have to balance everything, and that could include the past and and the present. So the movie starts with um, bad dreams um, that this woman, Rain, who is played by Georgina Lightning, is having bad dreams, and she wakes up, and there is a ghost in the woods Uh, behind her house, which is the same man that was in her Sundance dream. We see the Fond du Lac Reservation and Tribal College, and this is from the uh, Fond du Lac Band of Lake Superior Chippewa um, in northern Minnesota. If you go to the website of the Fond du Lac Tribal College, they uh, list their core values. Um, Their value is the good path, and uh, their curriculum reflects the teachings of the nine core values of the Anishinaabeg. First is to honor the creator. Second is to honor the elders. Third is to honor plants and animals. 
And the fourth is to honor women. After that is keep our promises and uphold our pledges, show kindness and respect, be peaceful in mind and spirit, be courageous and be moderate in thoughts, words, and deeds. Notice there is no honor men. There is no honor children. It's honor the creators, the elders, the plants and animals, and the women. And one of the things that these boarding schools did not do was honor women. And this is a feminist story in many ways because it is all about the women and the legacy of the trauma that the women have from this boarding school. We see a school scene that goes right into a church confessional scene. And uh, these things are related because at the boarding school, it was the priests who were responsible for running the school and the priests who also sometimes gave certain people special attention and not in a positive way. Um, we find out that there was an earthquake there and that's what brings Bradley Cooper's character there because he is a geologist. And he's there to investigate why there was an earthquake in Minnesota, where there usually aren't earthquakes. And uh, they say that the earthquake that shouldn't be there is one of the stories that the elders can tell and explain, and that there is no need for a geologist. And of course, Bradley Cooper, being the geologist, doesn't pay much attention to that and, you know, keeps trying to do what he needs to do. When Bradley Cooper arrives at the Indian Affairs Office to get a permit to go to the boarding school, he looks in his rearview mirror and sees a vision of suicide in his own car. Um, and he says something to the um, tribal police officer character played by Adam Beach. Um, and Adam Beach says, well, it seems like as soon as a white man steps on the reservation, they act as if they're on peyote. And peyote is a hallucinogenic uh, substance. So again, talking about visions and whether visions and ghosts are the same thing. So we see that the tribal officer, Adam Beach, uh, even needs permission from Indian Affairs to go to the residential school property. Um, so it's definitely something that is set apart from the indigenous people. Um, and controlled by the government, even though the school has been closed for over 50 years in this movie. We transition to a bar scene um, where the characters say, well, we don't have earthquakes in Minnesota. And Rain, played by Georgina Lightning, uh, says she's seeing things and is terrified. Um, and partially because she recognizes the guy from her dreams that was then in the woods um, now on the street. So this ghost is everywhere. So the geologist drives out to the school, the boarding school alone, um, but there's a person watching him from the woods and uh, there are ghost children watching him from inside the school. They're not doing anything menacing. They're just kind of looking out the window, which is a very common ghost story for those of us at the Vassar campus um, because one of our ghost stories is the ghost of Gertrude, who just looks out the window. Uh, the guy from Indian Affairs shows up and confronts Bradley Cooper and says that he can't be there because it's government property. And then the uh, Indian Affairs agent puts up police line do not cross tape, blocking the entrance to the school, which is a very subtle but important piece of evidence, just like a bead in an archeological site. Police line do not cross tape is used for crime scenes. So this is pretty much the Indian Affairs guy um, admitting that this school is um, the location of a crime. He hears voices um, of the ghost children that are inside and he goes in uh, to investigate. I won't say much more about what happens to him because this is a, a suspenseful horror movie. You should, you should watch it. Uh, then we transition to uh, a mayoral candidate who is an indigenous man um, and his speech about Indian affairs wanting to repurpose the uh, boarding school property into a resort. And he says they need to recognize that there is a cemetery there. Um, and he says, yes, yes, they're promising us jobs. And then they talk about a little later that the earthquake may be a problem 
for the resort plan. So we're starting to see some agency in this earthquake, that it's not a geological event, that it's about the school, the ghosts, and the need to respect this place of trauma, especially the cemetery in the woods. So then we transition back to Bradley Cooper, who's the geologist um, looking for a newspaper from 1955. This is a 2008 movie, so it's from a long time ago. And he's uh, looking for the article on the earthquake that caused the school to close. So these big events kind of, it harkens back to the article on the Mount Pleasant Indian boarding school where the school closed because a 14 year old girl burnt it down. It reopened, but that it causes these major things. It requires this major thing to close this government program. Then we switch to an uncomfortable dinner of the main characters, including Georgina Lightning and Adam Beach uh, with a priest. And this is about the religious control of the school. And she sees this in a flashback dream, um, Rain Georgina Lightning does, where uh, there's a child at the school whose mouth uh, is washed out with soap for something we don't even know what she did. And uh, Rain Georgina Lightning wakes up with uh, soap in her mouth. So it's, it's more of a vision or a, 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 a a visitation than it is a, a ghost or a haunt at that point. The geologist Bradley Cooper returns to the school to find the crime scene tape pulled down, which might have something to do with what happened to the Indian Affairs guy, and maybe now there's no crime if, if, uh, if what happened to him was justified. So Bradley Cooper enters the dark building of the school for the first time wearing just a headlamp for light and its light shines on a sign that says kill the Indian, save the man, which was the official philosophy of boarding schools in the United States and in Canada. The tribal officer Adam Beach arrives just then and uh, he and Bradley Cooper, the geologist, speak about weird winds and spirits and suicides and storytelling. Um, and basically, Bradley Cooper explains that the suicide that he saw in the backseat of his car uh, was a indigenous friend of her, his. Um, and then Bradley Cooper says, the more I learn about this place, the boarding school and the trauma, and what happened here, it makes sense to me. And what makes sense to him is this generational trauma. So the more you learn about boarding schools, the more you understand what happened in the indigenous world in North America. So then begins a storytelling of generational trauma that's focused on uh, Georgina Lightning, her mother, her aunt, and this priest guy who keeps appearing. When Rain Georgina Lightning is holding her mother's hand, Rain has a flashback vision of medical violence ordered by the priest, which was to quiet Rain's mother and keep her to comply with the power of the church and the school over the people. And that violence has Rain's mother still institutionalized. And then the ghost from the dream, from the woodlot, from outside the bar, appears again. So there's definitely a spiritual guide that's bringing Rain on this journey of understanding herself, what the school has done to her family and now is doing to her. Driving home, Rain has an accident because the ghosts of the school children appear. The priest appears at the hospital and hears Rain telling her boyfriend, Adam Beach, um, that she knows what the priest did to keep her mother quiet. So the priest decides to do the same thing to her. So Rain says, or Georgina Lightning says, I'm seeing things. They started out as nightmares, but now they are real. So that brings you up to 45 minutes into the movie, but there's still an hour left. So I'm gonna stop there, but you should have enough at this point to be able to really look into and think about what's going on in this movie and how it relates to the archeology span of Indian boarding schools 
and how it relates to these places as haunted, not in a way that is necessarily negative to the indigenous people, but that is a, in a way that cries out for everyone, indigenous and non-indigenous, to recognize what happened there and make sure that it doesn't happen again. So in the YouTube playlist for week 13, I've linked the video, which you could watch on YouTube for, I think it's $3. Um, the trailer of the movie, if you don't like horror movies, so you can at least get a sense of what's going on. And there are several other versions of the trailer that show different scenes um, on YouTube. But I also linked there um, a more Canadian version of this story, Rhymes for Young Ghouls, which is also an Indigenous made and Indigenous acted movie, where the school is not the primary focus, but the after effects of how the school has altered people and how people try to get away from the school and how the school is still run by priests and how this complex relationship with religion exists. So it's a little less ghostly, um, a little more real, which to me is a little more upsetting. Um, so alternative, watch that movie if you don't wanna watch The Older Than America or if you like one, check out the other. And Hopefully both of these will give us a way of thinking about what we do and do not know about indigenous North America right before the coveted American holiday of Thanksgiving, which proclaims to be about indigenous North America, but in a very fictionalized way. I, I think we need to haunt Thanksgiving a little more. And if nothing else, maybe this will change up some of the conversations that you have at your Thanksgiving dinner table.